happens, it's something that you should expect, something that you should not caught, catch you off guard because the stock currently is at the resistance. So the possible retracement will look like this. It could, if selling will happen, selling will occur, Jollibee will drop, it could retrace back to the 131, 133 level because that's where the support is. That's where also the 20-day moving average is. And that's where the support that I drew hit. If you notice it here, uh Hey guys, so we are back with another edition of our Stocks by Request and as you all know, we've been tracking the top stocks that you guys requested over social media. It's just that last week, we had a lot of requests for Mary Mart, and rightfully so, it was an IPO, and we had three straight days of ceiling moves. We haven't really seen a lot of those over the past months, no? and after uh, KPPI was the last one where we saw an IPO boom push up and go ceiling. That's why we featured it extensively last week. But now, as things are about to somehow no move towards back to the norm we're gonna go back to the top stocks that you requested and similar to the previous months Jollibee along with Ayala Land, Ayala Corp, SM, SM Prime have been one of the largest requested and I've seen a lot of requests also for Pure Gold so that's what we're gonna tackle for this video by the way my name is Marvin Germo and I'm a stock market trader and investor and I've been investing in the markets for more than 10 years now and the heart and the goal of why I create videos like this is not these are not picks this is me sharing what I know this is me sharing it I love sharing my idea so that you guys get to see bits and pieces of it so you can form your own strategy form your own logic but ultimately my goal is not to give you fish but my goal is to equip you so you get to decide on your own so that you don't have to rely on your friend you don't have to rely on videos like this for you to be able to have the conviction to buy sell hold or avoid the whole goal of this video is to empower you that you get to create the decisions on your own that you get to decide to trade on your own so if you're new to this appreciate it if you could subscribe and smash the bell so you get updated every time i come up with new content about this about the stock market about trading because i really believe that investing in the stock market still and i keep saying this over and over if it's done right done properly done with the right horizon done with the right risk management and it fits you and you expose yourself to an amount of money that will work for you i believe it's one of the greatest ways still to create wealth over stretch period of time and you will never get videos here in this channel about get rich quick because i don't believe in get rich quick i believe in get rich right i believe in get rich by loving the process doing the daily grind building the right skill so that's what it's all about now here's the thing i got a lot of questions over the past uh, over the past few days especially when jollibee hit 150 pesos per share as you all know uh the highest point of where jollibee was was around 320 plus uh, at some, uh, more than a year ago then entered then at some point also last march when everyone was selling jollibee hit around 90 pesos per share so context it's a great way off from where it was from its highest point but it's not anymore at its lowest point and in this video i want to discuss in this podcast i realized now that but by the way I've, I've, I'm, i think i'm calling this more of a podcast already not not a vlog because uh, because of the lockdown i haven't been really doing a lot of vlogs and for those who have been watching me uh for the past years you know you would see that most of my videos before would be outside me walking with my camera in snow in mountains in beaches wherever i am but since we have been i haven't really left the house uh, as much you now since uh the quarantine period and it's just been like this me my mic and my laptop and me interviewing people as well so i i think uh, my videos would really focus more on podcast related content and if this is okay with you and this, this is something that uh benefits you put it in the comment section i want more podcast i want more marvin Germo podcast so i know what you want or if you like more vlogs so just put them in the comment section as well now these are the six uh and a lot of you guys wanted this no uh, a table of contents of what i will discuss so i've been implementing that also ever since uh you guys wanted it so these are the six things that i want to talk about which relates to jollibee uh, i want to talk about the macroeconomy and how it affects jollibee then some news about Jollibee as well. 
then price action are relating to it hitting 150 over the past few days. Then uh, valuations is Jollibee today cheap, expensive, then as then everyone's favorite technical analysis. And I, I really believe that technicals is the game. I really believe that it allows me, you know, especially for us retailers watching this, it gives us a firm grasp of what people are believing and thinking about the stock. It also shows us if people are more bullish or bearish and it gives us strategic areas and where uh, we want to buy and sell. But I realized also that uh, there's 115, 116,000 subscribers here and there's a big portion that are investors. There's also a portion that's quick traders. Then there's also a portion that are uh, position traders. And I want to cater it to all of you. That's why I'm trying to give as much information. And my goal here is you just digest, digest the information, then make it fit to what works for you, quick trading, position trading, or investing. Then we're going to end this video uh, with a recap based on everything that we talked about. So if it sounds good, comment below. If it sounds good, comment, I'm ready, I'm excited. By the way, I I forgot to say this now. I posted a video, or it's going to post, but I posted a picture uh, in Facebook where uh, I received a robo, robot vacuum, uh, courtesy of Patrick Miguel. It was one of the first times that a, a YouTube subscriber gave me something. Uh, so thank you so much, Patrick Miguel, and to your girlfriend also, who I believe has been messaging my wife also over and over. So thank you. Uh, it's not really something that you would expect because every time I do videos like this, my, my intention is really not to take. Every time I make videos like this, my intention is just to uh, give as much uh, to you guys as possible. So uh, something like that is, uh, I don't know, it's something that is a welcome surprise. And thank you. I I just want, I'm just a type of person that wants to give as much because I know that I've also received a lot in my life and to whom much is given, much is required and the best receivers are the are the ones that give also as much and i want to give as much to you guys so let's start so looking at the macro economy i think one of the biggest triggers uh for a lot of this optimism and it's not just please remember this it's not just about jollibee but it's about the broad market in general uh about what's happening in the macro economy ever since uh the gcq ever since we started to open up the economy more we saw stocks start to push up uh, not just in in the retail segment, but uh, I think retail stores and mass and companies connected to mass gatherings are the ones that are most affected. They're the ones that are the most hit. They're the ones that get bought, battered down. They're the ones that lost a lot of projects. They're the ones that uh, lost money uh, in in all of this. So opening up the economy gives a breath a, a breath of fresh air uh, to investors. Knowing that, no, uh, just to be clear also, that the, what we saw uh, at the start of June is just pure optimism that at least the economy is jump-starting already. Everyone already knows that for the second quarter, April, May, June, the economy will contract. Everyone is expecting that already. And it might not also be back yet even on the third quarter of the year. But if you all know the market, I've been mentioning this in the previous videos that the stock market is a forward-looking market. That the drop for Jollibee at 90, that the, drop, that the drop for Ayala Land at 19, that the drop for GT Capital below 300, below 400, uh, was pretty much sentiment-driven. It was forward-looking. It was already anticipating that because of the lockdown, because of what we're seeing here, we, we are seeing the markets drop lower. And that's what we saw when everything dropped last March. Now the movement up already is an anticipation, an optimism, a sign that things are better. It's not that things are already better. It's not, but the opening gives it a shot and a sign. And uh, I wanted to mention this, that Jollibee, when we talk about Jollibee, we're not just talking about a local company, but we're talking about a local company with multinational operations. Please remember they have coffee bean over a thousand plus stores. They have a large exposure of shops and companies in China and in the US. That's where Smashburger is. That's where they have exposure for Jollibee and Chow King brands in the US and also Red Ribbon. Then in China, uh, they also have a lot of shops there. They also have a lot of brands that are owned, that are Chinese brands that we don't even know here. Then they also have a large exposure in Vietnam. That being said, as the world starts to open, uh, it brings a sign that all of these retail establishments will further kick in and start to earn. But I think one thing to consider is this. A lot of companies have been pivoting. How good Jollibee is to leverage its brand? Because Jollibee is a brand. 
please remember Jollibee and Chicken Joy are strong brands around the world. And it's it's pretty obvious, not just for locals here, but a lot of foreigners as well. I had a video with Lane Fable talking about Jollibee, how they love Jollibee, how they believe it's a good company. But here's the thing. Uh, they have a good brand. Jollibee is a brand. Chicken Joy is a brand. But one thing you have to consider is how good they will pivot in e-commerce. How good can they pivot in online deliveries, leveraging also Grab and Food Panda here in the Philippines, but in the same way leveraging takeout and curbside delivery. And if they'll continue to sell their products in groceries and supermarkets, let's see how that goes because that's a stream of revenue. Please remember, the companies that will thrive, the companies that will win are those that adapt are those that shift are those that pivot so how big of a revenue will online be and i've said this in previous videos online sales e-commerce for jollibee has spiked up uh, ever since the lock lockdown and people who have not eaten jollibee would want to still eat in jollibee it's just that because of the lockdown they were not able to do so and i think the winner in all of this is uh, whoever the company the company that will be able to seamlessly integrate cashless payments and seamlessly make it easier to, see, to for Filipinos to see them more, uh, more eyeballs in those companies. I, I believe they're gonna do very, very well. So let's see how big, at, at least at the end of the year, look, we have to see uh, from now up until the end of the year or moving forward, how big of a chunk e-commerce will be, uh, online sales, sales will be for Jollibee. So that's what I believe from a macroeconomic standpoint. I hope though that, uh, we do not go into a second lockdown because we cannot afford a second lockdown. Please remember, Jollibee is predicated on spending, consumption, Filipinos thinking that things are back to normal, uh, Filipinos believing that they want to enjoy life, that they want to spend, that they want to eat. If there's a lot of fear, there's a lot of anxiety, then people might skip off. So when, when people accept this new way of living, I, I think the spending will go back. So that's my take on the whole, uh, on the macro. Things are opening up. It doesn't mean that things are better, but it shows that uh, people are now starting to enjoy enjoy stuff. Let's continue. Comment below if you're learning. Comment below if you're enjoying this. Uh, it looks like now a webinar type of format already, so, but this is like podcast slash webinar. So we're in the second point. Uh, Jollibee News. And this has been reported for... A couple of weeks ago a couple of weeks already i said this also in a previous video but for those who are watching this for the first time just to refresh you uh, i want to note that jollibee lost money uh, for the first quarter it's 1.79 billion pesos and that's quite big and i want to reiterate also that this loss uh, just factors in the first quarter of the year what do i mean by that please do note the lockdown happened mid-march meaning this 1.79 billion pesos in loss is just a first quarter where we have not really seen the full effects of the lockdown. So there's a chance that April or May might be a bigger loss also for Jollibee. And that's why there's some, some bearishness also in the stock. And that's why it also started to push down. Please remember the biggest issues for the first quarter in the Philippines, number one was the Tal Volcano. So it hit, I think, stores in that area, Cavite, Patangas, Laguna, then you also have to consider the lockdown was March, but February at some points of March, people were not going out already. Even though there was no lockdown, you could feel it already in the malls. A lot of people were not uh, were not hanging out. They were not dining in. People were not watching movies because of the fear of the coronavirus. And I said this in a lot of videos that uh, what's pushing the economy lower is not just the coronavirus. It's the measures that we have for the coronavirus, the lockdown, and the fear of the coronavirus. But uh, in terms of news, now this is quite fresh. Uh, Jollibee raised 300 million US dollars, or is raising 300 million dollars, or securing a, lo a loan or a note, uh, a 300 million peso, 300 million dollars, 5.5 years at 4.125%. 4 and then another note for 300 million US dollars also for 10 years. Uh, at 4.75 percent so they are shoring up on cash and i i think no this is the trend and you've seen this in a lot of the other companies and i've reported this in other videos that majority of the companies right now are trying to take advantage of the low interest environment please remember right that the bsp is lowering interest rates to help stimulate the economy and because of lower interest rates 
it encourages businesses to borrow money. And as they borrow money, it gives them more capital. As they have more capital, they can stay afloat. They can fight. They can take advantage of opportunities. They can use that to uh, still pay their people. They don't have to actually close down. So the lowering of the interest rates is favorable for the economy, for these businesses, for people who want to buy cars, people who want to buy uh, houses. But in the same way, it's favorable for the large businesses because they get to borrow cheap. And you will see this, and it's not just going to be Jollibee, I believe, as long as interest rates are lower, you will see more and more and more businesses borrow. But I believe this is them borrowing money. So if it's 300 million uh, US dollars, it's 1.5, so times two, it's 3 billion uh, pesos. This is for them to be able to combat the effects for the coronavirus. And that's what a lot of uh, the other companies are doing as well. They're shoring up cash to protect them for the near term, to protect them against this new normal. Again, this is something that a lot of these companies did not include in their analysis from last year. No one expected, and I keep saying this, no one expected uh, the economy to be closed literally 90% by March, April, and May. No one expected that. So this money is for them to combat it. And here's what's so interesting about Jollibee. I would say in a lot of the videos that you focus on cash, the company has a lot of cash. The company has a large balance sheet. The company who has amazing, uh, who has who has a very very strong cash position will be able to survive this. And when this comes, when this uh, issue, this crisis will pass, they could come out running because they have cash. Jollibee has twenty six point five billion pesos in cash to support its operations. Jollibee will be able to be liquid in all of this, and I think that's one of the sign. Please remember, signs that when they take out a loan, they borrow money, and people lend them, is a good sign that when even if times get bad, as long as cash is available to them, they will be able to stay afloat. So people who are asking if Jollibee has a lot of money, they still have 26.5 billion pesos in cash. Just to put it into context, the IPO of Mary Mart was 1 billion pesos, I repeat. The IPO of Mary Mart was 1 billion pesos. Jollibee, right now, in cash, has 26.5 billion pesos. Let that sink in. The amount of cash that they have that's just purely in cash versus the amount that was raised via IPO last week. Mary Mart IPO, 1 billion. Jollibee in cash, 26.5 billion. Anyways, hope you're learning. I hope this is something that's helping you. Now let's proceed to the next topic about price action. So I mentioned it on the top of the video that uh, Jollibee hit 150 pesos per share and it's something that it has hit, but after it hit that, it started to slide down. So the biggest question of a lot of people is, is this different, number one? Number two, aside from this being different, uh, what's changing in terms of its price movement? Now, let me show you a bit of yesterday's uh, price action. As you can see here, uh, this is the volume-weighted uh, volume average of all of the trades that happened for Jollibee yesterday. And you will see this. At the 150 peso mark, you see a bulk of the trades happened there. 50% of the trades happened at that particular price point. Meaning, uh, if there's one thing that I do know about investing is that when people buy something at a certain price, for those of you who study technical analysis like me, technical analysis, the price discounts everything. The re reason why people want to buy it at this particular price is because they believe at this price, it's fairly valued at this price at this price they they believe that they will still have enough upside for it so a lot of people at 150 for just for today just for yesterday believe that Jollibee at 150 was a fair price for them to buy it again for technicals the price discounts everything now uh a lot of people were were, were messaging me and saying Marvin uh sorry <laughs> Marvin that's so interesting for people to call me Kuya but I'm not I'm I'm, I'm I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's a nice kuya. <laughs> Anyways, uh, people were saying there were messages, Sir Marvin, Marvin, uh, we saw foreign buying for Jollibee. And I, I want to note this. If you look at this, I'll try to zoom in further. This is how it looks. Uh, for Jollibee at 150 pesos, you had 135 million pesos in foreign buying, which is respectable. Then you had 91 million pesos in foreign selling. So yesterday, Toto naman yung mga uh, message you know, that there's really foreign buying, 44 million pesos worth of foreign buying. And if you look at the other side of the volume locals, 
uh, you had 107 million worth of local buying than 152 million worth of local selling. So uh, there were more locals selling today than foreigners. Value turnover at 253 million pesos is highly good, highly respectable. It's 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 not something that you would say in a sobram very at the very very high side of its volume, but it's not something that you would say that it's low. All right, so let's continue. Hope you're learning. Uh, and I've, I've, I've made a commitment to make longer videos because I realized that I'm, this is not a, really a vlog channel. <laughs> this is really an education channel that uh, the way I explain things, I, I love sharing and I love explaining. That's why the videos drag on so that I can go deep and I can explain it more. If you, Again, if you guys like this type of format, I want your feedback, comment. I like uh, more detailed videos versus I want less detailed videos. Anyways. Uh, this is again the distribution naman, of uh, the brokerages. And I've been showing this extensively for the Mary Mart videos. For the Mary Mart videos, you would normally see it uh, mostly no, uh, local brokerages and primarily local brokerages that are heavily connected to retail accounts. For here, you, you will see quickly that there's a lot of foreign, uh, foreign brokers here from Credit Suisse to JP Morgan, uh, to CLSA, etc. So you see that this is something that's bought not just by locals, this is something that's bought by foreigners like Credit Suisse. 19.21% of the trades were them. 19.21% foreign, but not just foreign, foreign institutions. And if you've been following the videos that I've been uh, making, I've been mentioning that um, it's the foreigners slash foreign institutions who have a large amount of money in our markets that when they move, they have the ability to bring markets or stocks up. They also have the ability to bring it down. So there. So we're seeing foreigners start to come in. But the difference between this when we start analyzing this compared to Mary Martin, uh, in my opinion, is you also have to look at it from a perspective of you're not just looking at it from one day because it's not just a newly IPO'd stock. You have to see how long have foreigners been buying. So everything we need to know is found in the charts. So as you can see below, we have a chart for uh, for foreign buying and selling. At the start of June, and this brings everything into full circle. Now I mentioned that uh, markets have started to go, go up because there's a sense of positivity, of optimism on the GCQ that people are thinking that because of the GCQ, people will go out and things will get better. And as you can see, the whole upward movement since June was supported by a lot of net foreign buying. So that being said, I wanted to state this. Upward movement since June is one, because we're seeing more volume, but not just because of more volume, more people wanting to buy it up, but not just that. The ones that are buying it up are foreigners, but not just foreigners, institutions, and they've been buying more since June than they've been selling. So if you notice it, since a certain portion of April, foreigners have been selling, then pockets of it, they bought a bit. But whole of Mar uh, large portions of March and large portions of April, foreigners have been selling. So what I can say based on the numbers, based on the data, foreigners have been buying the markets up. And the reason why it's heading up because they've been buying higher and they've been buying more than what they've been selling. So let's continue. Now, valuations. Let's try to answer the question, is Jollibee cheap or expensive? By the way, the valuations that I'm going to use now, uh, for those who attended our Stock Smart sessions, we heavily talk about uh, EPS there. Uh, the EPS that I'm going to use is the trailing 12 months. Um, what's going to be interesting is I think the EPS for 2020 will be lower, brought about by... That's where we're seeing the ano, that's where the lockdown is. Eh? So you can expect that for when we're analyzing this at some point in the future, as more data, as more earnings come out for 2020, uh, you might see the PE ratios of not just Jollibee, but a lot of companies that are heavily affected by the lockdown to go higher. Because as you all know, the formula for PE ratio is price divided by EPS. If the EPS is lower, the PE ratio uh, becomes higher and becomes more expensive. And please do note that Jollibee from 90 plus to 150 has gone up quite significantly. And one of the reasons why it may look expensive also is because the EPS, there's an expectation EPS will be lower later on in the future. Jollibee has been ex historically expensive. And from 90 to 150, it has gone up quite a bit. So this is the EPS, or uh, this is the P ratio of Jollibee 
uh, using the trailing 12 months, it's 53.72, uh, comparing it to benchmarks of 20, it's expensive. Comparing it to its historical average, it's expensive. Uh, comparing it to some of its peers, not exactly the same scale, but not exactly uh, almost the same segment, but Shakey's is at 12, Max is at 11. So relatively speaking, head-to-head -head against this, against Max and against Shakey's, Jollibee's expensive, head-to-head -head against uh, its historical averages, it's expensive, head-to-head uh, -head against its benchmarks, it's expensive, and, and just because it has moved up from 90 to 150, that's why you're seeing the P-E ratio become higher. And again, if EPS continues to degrade uh, because of what, what happened uh, during the lockdown, there's an expectation that the PE ratio would become even more expensive. Now, to everyone's favorite technical analysis, I comment below if you guys like technicals more or comment below if you like fundamentals more. Uh, comment below if you like both. No. Uh, and again, I said this at the start of the video, I've been making a combination of this just to know that everyone uh, that there's not everyone is using technical say there's a large chunk of people also using fundamentals there's a large chunk of people that have other methods and uh the reason why i'm not just discussing technical here i'm discussing almost every aspect to, is to cater to do everyone who watches this channel and 116,000 uh, by all means is a diverse set of people now this is where jollibee is uh if i just want to note that jollibee is at the resistance so from the get-go i want to state this if jollibee goes down next week it's primarily because it's at the resistance and it's not just at the resistance it's all it all it's a place where it met the 100 day moving average the 100 day moving average also if the stock is below the 100 day moving average it functions as a resistance and it functions as an area where people are selling but if you backtrack also here somewhere around april it hit this resistance already and it started to go down it hit this also again at some point in april and it started to go down so this is the third time Jollibee is trying to threaten the 100 day moving average, I repeat, uh, the, the 150 peso resistance level. So please do note, when it tried to hit 150 in mid-April, the stock went down. When it tried to hit 150 at the end of April, it started to go down. So let's see what happens for the third time, if it's enough to break past it or if it will fall back down again. Again, I repeat, at the 150 level, it's not just a resistance that I drew. It also coincides with the 100-day moving average. So again, I keep saying this now, when you are analyzing markets, it's never about uh, guessing, forecasting. It's never about predicting, but it's always about risk management. It's always about trying to see if this trade works for you, trying to see if this is a good trade, a favorable trade. What I do know right now is this. Because of the resistance that I drew and because of the 100 day moving average, that if selling happens, it's something that you should expect, something that you should not caught, catch you off guard because the stock currently is at the resistance. So the possible retracement will look like this. It could, if selling will happen, selling will occur, Jollibee will drop. It could retrace back to the 131, 133 level because that's where the support is. That's where also the 20 day moving average is. And that's where the support that I drew hit. If you notice it here, uh, if you notice it here at some point uh, in April, it hit this level and started to bounce. If you notice it here, it's a support because after this, it started to break down. Then it broke out again, hit this level, then it started to go up. Then boom, hit this level, started to bounce. So, possible trading plan for you. As you start analyzing this, is basically if Jollibee hits the 131, 133 level and starts to bounce, you buy it. But do not buy if if Jollibee does not break 149, 150 uh, next week and it starts to retrace. Do not catch it while it's falling. The next best place for you to catch it is at the 131, 133 level. If it hits that, wait first. Also, if it bounces, do not buy it as as it hits because there's an expectation or there's a chance that. It may also break down as what we've seen last may so you please watch out for that first 131 133 level if it holds if it holds it becomes a buy opportunity if it holds and bounces an even better buy opportunity and set your target prices back at the 150 level with that being said it presents a 13.8 percent trade for you it presents a 13.8 percent upside so that's the scenario if fails to break out of 150 fails to go above 150 and it starts to retrace at the 131, 133 level. Now, if the opposite happens and it breaks out, here are two possible narratives. If you are a quick trader, breaks out of 150, stays above 150, 
it now has a shot to go back at the 185 level. So I repeat, if you are a quick trader, break out from 150, 150 solidifies itself, proves itself as a support. And if you look at this chart here, it hasn't been above the 150 level since March 2020. So I repeat, if it stays above 150, 150 solidifies itself as a support, that becomes a signal to buy. Set your target prices close to the 180 to 185 level because that's where the resistance that I plotted uh, is. And it's close also to the 200-day moving average, which presents itself as a very, 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 very strong resistance. So again, stays above 150, target price is 185. And if you're a position trader in all of this, that action, uh, if it stays above 150 and continues to pull up, will make it reverse from this downtrend that has been there for quite some time already. So a byproduct of it staying above 150 and continuing to push to the 180 level is there's a shot, there's a semblance that we may see Jollibee start to reverse from a downtrend into something that's more bullish. I repeat, if we see it go above 150, stay above 150 and push toward the 180 level, uh, it's further evidence that there's more buying happening already for Jollibee, that's one. And there's an evidence that we're seeing it start to reverse. If you notice it, the counter trend already, it's trying to build a lower high and a, uh, it's trying to build a higher high and a higher low, which are ingredients for an uptrend and a breakout from the 150 level will further show evidence of that. Uh, now I'll keep you updated because there's still a resistance that they need to clear. They still haven't broken past the 200 day moving average. They still haven't broken past the 185 level. So if it hasn't break, broken past that, it's not yet still a full reversal, but breaking past the 150 and pushing towards 180, showing signs already that it's starting to reverse and it's showing signs that it's starting to be more bullish. Anyways, just to recap, this is what we talked. This is what we talked about. Uh, this is what we talked. This is what we talked about for Jollibee. Uh, number one, uh, things are getting better. Things are starting to open up for the economy uh, because of the GCQ. People are spending, again, uh, Jollibee's borrowing money to stay afloat. Jollibee's borrowing money to shore up on cash. Uh, for the technicals, it's everything hinges on how the 150 level will be. If it stays above 150, then we're assuming a breakout. If it stays above 150, it has a greater chance that it becomes bullish. It becomes an uptrend and it, becomes, it reverses. If it doesn't, I plotted areas where it could retrace as the next support and that's where you can buy and you can take profits back at the 150 level. And from a valuations perspective, relatively right now, it's at the higher end and it's more expensive. So. Did you guys learn a lot? I hope you are. I hope this is something that added value to you. I hope that you are learning from this. Comment below if you're learning. Comment below also if you stayed till the end of all of this. I just want to benchmark. Now, the reason why I ask if people are staying till the end is I want to know if you're listening to the whole part of the video and you're not going to bore the video. Na to. Uh, and I try to do as much and I try to uh, create as much value for you guys as possible. So comment below if you're learning and comment below if you stayed. And uh, hit the like button if this is something that is helping you. And I'd appreciate it no? uh, if you want this video to be seen by more and more Filipinos. Uh, share this to more people. You can send it to Viber groups, chat groups, post it in your Facebook wall, uh, wherever people get to see this. Because I, I really believe that goes a long way to advance financial literacy to advance investing in the Philippines. And a uh, quick plug, five books in Shopee. They're in the link in the description. For those who want to order them, uh, they can, uh, Shopee delivers uh, to a lot of portions in the Philippines, not to every part, but uh, to every portion that they have coverage from. And then I have two online courses, one with Chinkitan Stock Market for Everyone, and another one with Sean C, Make Money, Grow Money. Those are online courses if you want to join. Link is in the description. Then uh, for those who are asking about my gear, uh, they're all they're all below. Uh, then I have a Patreon account for those who want to support this channel. And what else do I want to, to announce? I guess that's it. Uh, yeah, there are, link, there are other links below for um, the VPN that I use, the virus scan that available to all of you so you can just click them if you want to uh, check what they are but they're all in the description below and if you guys have any questions feel free to put them in the comment section i'm gonna make uh, new videos on top of that so there
So that's it for now. This is Marvin Germo. I want to know also, our, based on all of this, what's your plan for Jollibee? Put them below. Put your thoughts. I want to hear your thoughts about Jollibee, and I hope this added tremendous value to you, and I hope this helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. Marvin Germo. See you all again soon, guys, and God bless you all.